Welcome to day 30 of the 30 day pelvic floor challenge. That's right, you have made it to the end. Well done. So on this last day, we're going to do one more jumping motion. And for this one, we're jumping both feet together. But if you work on pelvic floor relaxation instead of strengthening, please do click on the link in the description and that will take you to the relaxation portion of the video. So otherwise, we're going to work today on star jumps. Now, star jumps aren't my favorite exercise. It's not something that I do often, but it's important. It's like a test almost, a litmus test for your pelvic floor function. Because if you can do a star jump with good intra-abdominal pressure and good uplifting force from the pelvic floor without leakage, without symptomatic prolapse, then you have made it to the end. <laughs> it's like a little test just to see. Now, one of the things that I would say if you did the goddess pose last week and you weren't able to track your knees across your toes, then star jumps probably aren't right for you. If you have, when you come to this position, a little bit of internal rotation on the hips, then it's not the best thing to do. But if you wanted to just do a couple as a litmus test for, is your pelvic floor gonna hold strong? Then you can, of course, do that. I personally have internal rotation on the hips. Normally, I was born with like knocked knees and I sat with internal rotation on the hips as a child. So I have to be careful when I do these because my knees do have a tendency of going that way. But we're going to do them. Now, the important thing to remember, like the other jumps that we did, is that you have to contract in the air. So when we go to jump, you're going to have to take your contraction while you're up and then you're going to land. Now, you're going to have to also release the contraction as you land, but not all the way to zero. So you want to imagine your squeeze, if you're going to squeeze as hard as you can, the squeeze comes when you're in the air. And then when you land, there's, there is quite a bit of um, upward force coming from the ground that you can't really absorb so well through the joints because it's a little bit stiff. But we're going to try a couple of these. So take the feet and hands together and we're going to do one and two. Now take the grab in the air, pelvic floor, and just make sure that the knees aren't falling in when you come up. And then we can try to do it a little bit faster. But when you're going faster, I want you to really focus on the pelvic floor. It's a lot harder when you're going fast to relax and contract again. So what you can do maybe is do it with the breath where you're doing your exhalation on the way up and your inhalation on the way down. So if you're doing that, you are, of course, increasing the pressure on the way down, but you want to have a little bit more tone in the floor on the way up. So to go a little faster, one, two, three, four and five. Okay, <laughs> how did that feel? Maybe it feels really controlled. Maybe you've like just held a strong pelvic floor all the way through without any pulsing. For me, I a little bit tend to do that. I tend to grab it and it never actually, when I do the fast ones, comes all the way back down to a relaxation. But this is the litmus test. Jumping with the feet out is the litmus test. You're actually opening a little bit the vaginal hiatus, which is opening everything up a little. And without good strength on the front portion, particularly of the pelvic floor, there can be leakage when you do this. So pay attention to the contracting while you're up. You don't have to do a million of these. Don't do them, definitely don't do them every day. It's like, I don't think it's worth training extensively in star jumps, but if you can do this, then you can go to Zumba, you can go dancing, you know, you can be the one at the concert that's jumping up and down and, you know, really enjoying the thing. You can like jump on the trampoline with your kids, you know, jump up and try to go straddle as, as wide as you can. And all of these things kind of give a little bit of joy to life. So I want you to get to the stage where you don't have to worry. You don't have to think, oh no, I don't have a liner on so I can't jump or I'm, I'm, we I'm not wearing a pad so I can't run or, you know, I can't do things because I'm going, to, I'm going to leak. I want you to get to the stage where you know that you can do all of the things that you want and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, with all of that said, we're gonna do our little relaxation. That is the end of our strengthening. So with the relaxation today, we're gonna to go for a wide-legged child's pose. And for that, we 
need to use, um, it's going to be supported. So we want to use both a blanket and the bolster. So we're going to take the bolster in nice and close to the body. We're going to take the blanket underneath the heels. And this gives us quite a bit of support underneath the heels. And also it allows the hips to kind of rest a little and you have something under the perineum here. So it can sometimes be a little bit easier to feel the expansion through the pelvic floor as we do this. So we're gonna allow ourselves to fold over and we'll do one cheek at a time. So we'll spend the first portion with one side to the one cheek down and then we'll swap about halfway. So bring your cheek and then let your arms rest out. Start to let go of your shoulders. And then let go of your hips. You can close your eyes if you want to. Bring your awareness to your spine. I want you to notice where you feel the twist in the spine. So where close to the neck can you feel it? And can you release any little bit of tension that's around that twist? Notice how it feels in the sides of the ribcage, in the side of the body. Notice how it feels on your stomach. Just let the belly hang. No holding here, just complete letting go. And then feel the hip sockets where the femurs, those big bones in the leg, come into the hip sockets. I want you to imagine expansion in the hip sockets. So imagine space. Think about really soft marshmallow and just imagine that it's all soft in there. Squidgy and full of space. And then feel your legs. Try to allow the legs to be really heavy. Try to let go. On your next inhalation, just lifting the head and placing the opposite cheek on the bolster. Bringing the awareness back to the spine, just noticing where the twist is on the spine. Just feel the whole backside of your body and just allow the back of the body to be really soft. I want you to feel as though all of the tissues are kind of melting over the bolster. So imagine that the muscles on your back are kind of sliding. They're, they're letting go. They're not gripping at all. I want you to notice how it feels on your backside. So feel from the low back all the way around to the top of your legs at the back. I want you to feel all of those tissues with your mind and imagine that everything is just releasing. Imagine a little stretch, a little letting go. Think gentle, soft release. Feel the weight of your chest resting heavy into the bolster. Imagine that your whole body could just become one with this bolster, just release so much that it just melts down and then bring the awareness back to the pelvic floor and just notice how you feel in the pelvic floor i want you to imagine expansion with each gentle inhale that comes to your body imagine relaxation with each exhale and then starting to fit, take the first of three long, deep breaths. Use these breaths to create further expansion in the body. Use each exhalation to relax even deeper. Inhaling fully and exhaling to release. One last deep inhalation. Just bring some energy into the fingers. Gently press the hands into the floor and take yourself up.
Just move the bolster and the blanket and come back to a seated position. And that is it for our 30 day challenge. I hope that wherever you are on your journey of empowerment, that you found this useful. I hope that the information helps you to achieve the goals that you have for your pelvic floor, for your body. And I hope that you have above all else enjoyed this. And I hope that the relationship to your pelvic floor is just a little stronger after everything that we have done. Of course, if you have any questions, you can join one of the live Q&A sessions and ask your questions there. They happen every Wednesday. And remember to talk about pelvic floor dysfunction. If we talk about these things, we can break the taboo for those who are suffering in silence. Together, we can and will make a difference.